All right, so we're gonna start a fire in this wood stove. There's a couple of key things that we need to remember here, and that is wet wood is the enemy. Two is that what comes in has to go out. So what we have here is a wood stove, okay? Air is gonna come in, it's gonna burn in the fire, and then it's gonna go out, which leads you to your damper right here. And the damper needs to be going straight up and down to let the smoke out. So now that we can get air in and air out, we can start. So, like I said before, wet wood is the enemy. So what you want to do is find everything that you possibly can that's dry. And when you find dry stuff, it's going to snap, right? And it's going to make a noise when it snaps. That, that way you know it's dry. So what I got going on here is I went out into the woods and I grabbed a couple of things. One is I grabbed some birch bark, which is nature's best fire starter. Two is some vine bark, which you can find all over. And then I picked up a couple of dry branches and a couple of dry twigs. What you want to do here is you want to start small and end big. So now I'm going to open up our wood stove. I'm going to take my pile of birch and I'm going to set it right in here. Okay all of it. Then I'm going to take some of my vine bark. I'm going to set that right on top of it. Then I'm going to grab some of my twigs. Snap them right up. All right, you hear that snap? That means you're in there. Okay, we're going to set that right on top. I'm going to grab a couple more of these just so I have them on deck here. Just grab all of it. We're making a fire, might as well just burn it. So, a couple of proper snaps here. I'm gonna set on to the side there. And now we're gonna light it. Okay, so now it's starting to take off. Our birch is burning, and it's going to catch on to our bark and then it's gonna catch on to our twigs. So it's all in layers here. All right, and I'm just gonna keep feeding the fire little bits of everything. Little bits of twigs, little bits of sticks, little bits of the vine. And again, everything you need is in your backyard, so you look there first. There is enough trees out in this backyard and probably your backyard that there is a dry piece of twig around. That's going pretty good. We can just set that whole thing in there and as it gets a little bit bigger we can just add a little bit more. The key is keeping it small. A lot of guys will take a big piece of wood and throw it in there and light it with a lighter and expect it to light. It ain't gonna work, man. Unless you do it in steps and stages. Now, if you're having trouble finding the sticks, there's another way you can do it, and that is you just grab a piece of firewood that's on your rack or any rack or whatever, and rip the little pieces off. That's your kindling, okay? Just rip as much of that little stuff off as you can just rip off. And when you can't rip off anymore, Grab a different piece of wood and find some more of it. Okay? So now that my fire is going there, I'm going to start to add a couple of bigger sticks. I'm laying them on there nice and gingerly. I'm not putting them, just throwing them in there. I'm putting it on there so there's still air that can get in there because if you don't have air, you don't have fire. So now that that's going, I have a couple other pieces of sticks here, smaller pieces of firewood. Now, I waited for these because I can feel it. If the wood is cold, that means that there's a little bit of moisture in it. And if there's a little bit of moisture in it, the bigger it is, it won't burn. If it's smaller, the fire wins over the little bit of water that's in here. And the whole idea here is to build a nice bed of coals. Once we have that bed of coals, doesn't matter what we put in here, with the exception of anything that's not wood, it will burn. 
Now I see the fire starting to die down a little bit. I'm going to slow down. I'm just going to wait a second. I'm going to let it catch up. I'm going to clean as I go. Clean up my little mess. All of this stuff is going to burn just perfect. And I can feel that going right now. That is, we are not going to have to screw around with this fire because we did it right the first time. If you don't do it right the first time, you're just going to have to start back at the beginning. There's no skipping steps on this. So now that that is going, and I got all my small stuff in there, it's a happy little fire right now. It's just, it's just going right along. What I don't want to do is screw around with it too much and let it catch. Give it its time. And I can hear that wet wood that I put in there. I can hear the fire overtaking the water. It's hissing. It's just almost like boiling water. It's boiling the water out of the wood. It's gonna, the fire's gonna win over this little bit of wet wood. But if you have a lot of wet wood, you lose. Now you start listening to your fire. You can hear it roaring a little bit. You can hear it sizzling. And it's got plenty of air coming in because I have the door wide open. When I close this door just a little bit, it's now gonna make like almost like a fan where it's pulling it heavy right through this one spot. It doesn't have all of that air to come through. Now it's just trying to pull it right from that one spot. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna concentrate the air a little bit and it's gonna send it more as like a jet towards it. So you wanna leave that open just for a little bit until you see this fire really catching. And it's not, you know, it's not instantaneous. It takes a minute. You wanna, you wanna kinda leave it to do its thing for a hot minute and then uh, after that is when you start adding incrementally bigger pieces. The whole idea is to build your coals and let the coals stay there and, and sizzle so that every time you put a piece of wood on there, those coals are going to win over the dry wood and then it's going to catch that on fire and it's just the process that keeps going and going and going. If you have the coals in there and the bed in there, you can have a fire going for months. Every time you put another piece of wood on, it's going to create new coals, it'll go down and then it'll burn out and then you put another piece of wood on and it just keeps going and going and going. And you're going to hear this fire. You're going to hear it start to ramp up. You, if you sit here and listen to it, you'll know when, when you got this door cracked just the right amount, it's going to tell you. So now we're just sitting back listening to it and making sure that we got it right. And I can tell you right now, that wood that I put in there of the small stuff was wet, but I started with the dry stuff and made my coals right and it won. You can skip the kindling part of it with cardboard and paper and, and whatever, you know, that's, that's flammable of, of some kind of paper source to, to skip the whole kindling thing. But what happens is, is that burns quick. You've, you've done it before. You've burnt your old bills or, or, you know, old paycheck stubs or whatever, you know, it goes up like that. It doesn't leave you any coals. What it does is it, it just, it burns up and then you've got some ashy little paper things that are left around. That's why you want to use the kindling. That's why you want to use actual wood and the twigs and stuff like that. Because when that, when that burns down, it now burns on those, on those sticks and makes your coal bed. When you do it with paper and, and cardboard, you only got one shot to do that real quick because once that goes down to the ashy paper, you got nothing. That's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna look in my wood pile here and I'm gonna pick the best, driest, smaller piece that I can find, right? It's a, in this stage of the game, it's about what pieces you grab. Again, I'm feeling it. It's, it's not too cold. It's a little damp, but that's a pretty good fire going on. This one here is actually a pretty good one too. So I'm gonna give this fire one big piece to start with, okay? I'm gonna stick that right in the back. I'll stick the rest of this up here. And I mean, it's okay not to stick all of your kindling. Matter of fact, I'm gonna hold those off to, to the side in case I need them later. Because even with the coals going, if you stick smaller pieces in there on top of the coals, it's gonna catch faster than trying to shove a big log like this in there. And I can see it 
catching. It's not just the fires coming up, the, the fires actually getting forced to the back. And that's from the air from the room coming through this little bit that the door is open and then going out the pipe to outside. It's called draft. Air comes in, air goes out. Now sometimes, I, lo I loaded this up, I loaded this up pretty good. What I'm going to want to do here is open up a little bit more air section where the, the air can get to the coals, right? There's my coals. I'm going to push this wood back just a little bit to expose the coals a little bit more. Okay? Because the coals are what's driving this fire right now. It's not the actual flame. The coals drive the flame. And like I said before, the fire will tell you what it wants. It may not want the door shut right now. It seems to be doing pretty good right now with the door open. And I'm pretty sure if I get a little close here, you should be able to hear that sizzling. Set that off to the side. Give her one good piece here. I just changed the way the flame is going. The embers are starting to go a little bit. It's happy right there with the door. And now you let it do its thing for a little while. It sometimes takes about 25 minutes to 30 minutes for your coal bed to form and it to take on its own role of it's a fire that's going. That's looking pretty good. So we're gonna give it one more little piece here and we're getting to the point where we can just let it be see see where we started with twigs like this and within five minutes or ten minutes however we're at now we've gotten to this this is going to burn pretty hot and right now what we're doing is we're just letting all of the, the heat go right out the stovepipe because we want our draft, our airflow going in and keeping the fire going. The whole point of the wood stove itself is to heat the stove itself. This is all steel box and it's, it's heavy duty. And what happens is, is once that steel, it's just like a, a, a cast iron pot on your, on your stove. When you get that hot and you turn the gas or you turn your stove back off, that pot stays hot for quite some time. It's the same idea, but bigger. So now the wood stove will stay hot for quite some time and that's what heats the air. So once you have your coals going and your fire happy with, with your logs, that's when we're gonna go in and we're gonna shut the door, okay? We're gonna shut the door and it's getting enough air through this air intake, which most wood, all wood stoves have they are, they're just in a couple of different spots. This one here happens to be a vent up top. I've seen them where it's just a little vent on the side here and it's just, all it is, is it's the same basic principle. It's a matter of air coming in. So whether it's the dial here or the knob here, it's still the air coming in. This one I have set it high. I, I just shut the door. I want it to stay at high. So what I would do next is come over here to this damper. Now, if you turn this damper, all the way shut. It's shut. If you look at it like this, there's a plate inside there and that's blocking off all of the smoke. Well, you just took away all of your flow. It doesn't flow. It's just, you're going to kill that fire because it can't get out. But if you crack it just a little bit, you're going to restrict so much heat going through your stove and out to the outside where you're heating the outside to keeping that heat down and heating your stove. That's the whole reason for this. Now what this does is when it's keeping more of the smoke in this pipe and that's heating this pipe. But if you open the door and you don't have that open, smoke will come out. So when before you open the door, you turn it straight up and down so that the plate is going this way and not restricting any of the airflow. And when I open the door, it barely smokes. So let's talk about the pieces and parts of this wood stove. At the bottom here, we have the ash drawer. And inside 
underneath my bed of coals right now, I can't get to it, but there's a little trap door. And what you can do is open that trap door when you have no fire and push all the ashes into this drawer. And then you take this drawer and you go bring it outside. Then you have your, your door and your handle. How the handle works is there is a little clip right here, that lever. And what that lever does is it clicks right onto the side here. And that's how it opens and closes. We have our air inlet here. And what this is is a vent that when I close this, it shuts the air that it sucks up from here to put into your firebox. But this particular stove likes to be run on full blast. Um, if it gets too hot for you, well, good for you. You did a fire correctly. You can pull this down and shut the amount of air going to it, and then it's n your fire is not going to burn as hot, but it will burn longer. When you leave a wood stove, you want to make sure that your door is completely sealed and shut, and your air is turned down a little bit. You put four or five logs in there that you so it'll keep going while you're gone and you want to turn your damper just a little bit to keep your heat down and keep the, the house warm. Now let's talk about when your fire doesn't start and it's not fully cooperating. There's a couple of different things that you can do to jump start your fire. One is just simply blowing on it. This fire right now is starting to die down. If you take your fingers and make a little diamond in the middle of your fingers and you blow through that diamond, okay? It projects the air farther than it would of you going and burning your face. If you go back here and make your little diamond, I can keep my face out of the fire and farther enough back where I'm not breathing the smoke in. Another hack is if you happen to have match light charcoal, which is the charcoal that doesn't require the starting fluid, you can just put a little four or five biscuits of that to start your fire. And again, just add little stuff to it, but now you have a base that's not going to burn out right away. Um, cardboard is better than paper and paper, if you are going to use it, make sure you bunch it up and make the paper denser. If you can make it denser, like a big paper ball, then it's going to almost be like a coal and an ember or a piece of twig, but it'll never be the same, but it will work. If you follow all these things I said, it's going to work for you. If it doesn't work for you, start back at the beginning. I wouldn't mind you watching this video a couple times.